Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing a quick video on my new MYOG pack that I just made. This is not the how-to instructional video that's coming, I'm working on it. I have to make one more of these packs for my girlfriend and I'm going to make a few little tweaks and test out a few ideas on that. And after that, or during that process, I'll get the detail shots I need and the building shots and then I can release that video. But anyways, today I just wanted to give you a little rundown on kind of the design philosophy and the different concepts I put into this bag to make it what it is. So let's jump right in. As you can see, this pack has a hip belt, which my last DIY pack here, the purple monster thing, did not have a hip belt. and. To be honest, I struggle with that. When I built this pack, I debated back and forth. Do I really need a hip belt? Do I not need one? On the AT, ultimately my base weight, well, without camera gear, my base weight is gonna be around seven and a half pounds, but with camera gear, it's gonna be more like nine and a half pounds. So I think that's low enough that I don't really need a hip belt, but this will also be my first time hiking with a hiking partner, not alone, and I don't know what that will entail. And it's just nice to have a little extra carrying capacity if I ever need it. The hip belt really didn't add much weight. Speaking of weight, somehow this pack came in at exactly 16 ounces or exactly one pound. Not sure how that happened, but I like it. It's a nice even number. So it's a fairly lightweight pack. I can show you here the overall design on it. It's basically a frameless bag so you can see there's no cushion here there's no frame behind it it's just one piece of fabric but my idea behind that is I pack with my sleeping pad rolled up and stuffed on the inside right along the back panel here so that adds a little bit of cushion and a lot of structure so so long as I pack my bag right which I mean I always should in theory this pack will have plenty of structure and plenty of rigidity this way and it'll be really comfortable that's kind of the secret to these ultralight bags is you just have to pack them the right way, maybe use a pad as a structure behind the main panel. Pretty easy. And no, I didn't add any mesh or anything here or any cushion. One, because you don't need cushion. Two, because the mesh really all it does is trap sweat. And yeah, this is going to be hot, but anything against your back is going to be hot. You're going to be sweating. At least this doesn't soak up the sweat. So the straps I made this time are a huge improvement over what I have on the purple pack up there. Those straps were really wide. And while that was comfortable up top, I found that it started to dig into my collarbone here, which I didn't really like. So these straps have an S-curve design. Hopefully you can see this on camera. They kind of go out around the neck and then back in around the chest area. And so when they're up on your shoulder, it really keeps the pressure away from your tender parts of your neck and on your actual shoulder. And then it comes back in so you can comfortably cinch it across your chest. You might notice I don't have any hip belt pockets yet. I'm a big fan of hip belt pockets and I was toying around with a few designs. I really just couldn't settle on one. So I figured I'm just gonna finish the pack so I can actually test it out. And then later I'm gonna make some pockets that I can just sew on to the outside. So the bottom of the pack is a rectangle but the cool thing is the top of the pack really only has two panels. You have your main back panel here, and this main front panel is all one piece of fabric. So while the bottom is rectangle, this one piece of fabric kind of creates a sort of rounded appearance to the pack, which helps keep things really tight and compressed against the back of the frame here, the lack of frame here. One other thing I'll mention really quickly is that this bag is tapered. So it starts off around 10 and a half inches at the bottom here, and it goes up at the shoulder height. It goes to around 11. You can't really see it, but this bag has a bit of a taper to it. The thought process there is I always stuff my compressible quilt at the bottom of my bag and load everything on top of that. So as you load up this gear, because it's kind of a cone that comes down, everything is pushed down into that tighter space and it compresses things a little bit more, creates a better structure for the pack and saves room. So the top of the pack here rolls up as do most packs. And at the very top, you've got these two bright orange buttons that just 
let you easily pop it closed. If you really had to fill this to max capacity, these would allow you to do that without having to do a few rolls. But ideally, because X-Pack is waterproof, you would want to do a few rolls anyways. But as you can see, this gives me plenty of collar if I need extra storage for food or just extra something like a puffy layer or something up top. Main pocket of the pack is a Dyneema grid stop. Super tough fabric. It is a slightly waterproof fabric. I put in the bottom of the pack some drain holes. There's two here and then two in the corners of each pocket down there. Hopefully that's enough. And one thing I'm actually gonna modify from this on the next pack I make is I'm gonna put a mesh instead of this grid stop. That'll allow a lot more drainage. That'll be a little more friendly to a wet tarp or a wet rain jacket or something, wet socks being stored in this pocket. One cool little feature is through these drain holes, I've also incorporated the ice axe loops. So you don't have them flopping around all the time, but if you want them, you can pretty easily just push them out through that hole there and they come right out. Easy peasy. If you don't want them, you just push them right back in, like that, and they don't ever fall out. Running throughout this entire pack is a length of Dynaglide, which is like an Amsteel rope. And this rope connects all the way across and it acts as a compression for the back of the bag. So this pocket here is sewn into the bottom of the pack, but other than that, it's free floating. I guess it's sewn in on the sides here too. It's got an elastic drawstring here, and this string is easily adjustable through shock cords with cord locks that stay hidden underneath this pocket here. So if you want more tension, you can tighten this up on both sides and get a really tight fit. Or you can leave it more loose if you want to just kind of be able to easily dig into the pack. So like I said, this pocket's free floating. So when I undo this top strap here, it actually comes off. But basically, if you take this out, this whole pocket can fall off. So if I take out, right now I've got my rain jacket, my rain skirt, and my tarp in there. But if I take this out, we can strip down this pack and show you what the compression looks like. So on the bottom of the pack here, you can see the two ice axe loops sewn in and the compression system. So when this pocket's up, obviously it's clipped in up there and this is pulling the whole pocket up. And that acts as these side compressions, which go into a line lock here so you can really tighten it in. But then from there, it actually goes down through an O-ring here and back into this side pocket. And because this is a Dynaglide or an Amsteel rope, it can actually be fed through itself to create a whoopee sling. So if you really wanna, keep that up there. If you really wanna dial in this tension and compress the pack, so you can do that with this whoopee sling setup. And all you have to do is basically pinch or hold this part of the rope and pull this through and it tightens this up. So you can see that's really tight. And obviously you can loosen it too. All right, that about wraps it up. Thanks for watching everyone. If you have any questions or comments on the bag, I would love to hear them. So if you have things you think I should change on it or features you'd like to see added, taken away, whatever, let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear your feedback. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.